Welcome to part two of our live training session here with our LS Swap Nova. Now, in the last video, we created our base map. This video, we're gonna learn how to actually get the engine to fire up and run and go after sorting out the idle control. Um, in this particular car, it's gonna be a cable-driven throttle body. And the likelihood is we have to go in and probably adjust our throttle stop to be able to get the engine to maintain and to hold its own idle. There's gonna be very specific things that we need to take a look at for working with the idle control for both fuel spark timing and actually integrating the idle control into the holly so it can maintain and hold zone idle with this medium-sized camshaft that's been installed into our LS engines. We're gonna give you all the tips and tricks in order to get a cammed engine up and running on a holly. Without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can get started getting our engine to fire up and run. Welcome back to our live training session here with our LS Swap Nova. In the last video, we built our base global file that we are ready to upload into the Terminator X for this video. We're gonna get our engine fired up and running and hopefully be able to sort out the idle control and the fuel and spark timing in idle conditions specifically. We're also gonna be taking a look at doing uh, and checking our cranking fuel and our startup airflow so that the engine cranks and it fires and it's able to maintain its own idle. This is the very first step that you have to get over and get through in order to start the next process going into part throttle cruise style driving and then finally into wide open throttle tuning. So we're taking our calibration processes here and we're slicing them down into manageable chunks or sections that you can replicate onto your vehicle. So what I'm gonna be doing right now is actually uploading that file from the last video into the Terminator X. Then we're gonna go through, do a sensor check, go through all the basic details. We're gonna be talking about some things that we prepped in the last video in for this video going in and actually getting the engine fired up and running. And then we'll actually get it to fire up and run and we'll pay attention to all the little details and things that we need to do in order to get the engine dialed in for both fuel and spark timing. So let me jump up here. I have the file open. We can actually see that file here is called base map. We've saved that. If I go to file and we just go to open, we can actually open the file and take a look. We've saved that into its own folder for the project in our main directory here for all the files. So if we go in here to base cows, that'll lead us into the GM and then LS specific files, or if we have a Ford or if we have a Dodge, we can get to those, all those specific files. I've saved my folder for the project outside of that base cows folder. We can actually see the 944 LS swap Porsche that we did in another live training video here in the Terminator X training courses. Uh, that's found here. That was the other uh, project that we have stored in that um, same kind of area. So we have Nova EPA. So that's where I have that file. And then we can see this is the base map. I go here and click it and click open. This opens up the file, just what we had open right here. So now I'm gonna be transferring this and actually uploading this into the ECU. So what I need to do here is actually go in. And if we go here to sync with ECU, you can say TPS auto set needs to be reformed, perform before startup. Now, if we don't do the TPS auto set or calibration process, the coils and injectors actually won't fire. So we need to make sure we take care of that, but we need to upload this file. So this is the new file being uploaded into the Terminator X. I actually did a firmware swap on this Terminator X. It was running on the V1 software. So we're on the V2 software now, which required a firmware update. I did that before we even started filming, even in the last video. So there's no file on the Terminator X right now. So we can actually uh, go in and upload pretty much anything we want at this point, or we could upload, if there was something, we could upload it and overwrite it. But we're gonna upload this file, again, that we've created. So I'm gonna say, okay. I'm gonna say perform the TPS auto set. And I'm gonna say send to ECU. So it's sending all of my ICFs now for all of the diff different individual things that we've configured specifically for the vehicle. We'll allow that to finish. And then we'll go in and do the TPS auto set. That's one of the very first things to do. And the TPS auto set calibrates the throttle position sensor from zero to 100%. It's important that it tracks the throttle position for things like idle control or deceleration fuel cut to work properly. So if it's out of calibration, those things won't actually track right because it looks at throttle position and then lift throttles when you're off the throttle, it actually goes in and allows those features functions to activate and to work. So we can see right there, it's uploaded to the actual ECU. If we go into toolbox, actually, I'm sorry, to USB link here, this is gonna be establishing uh, the USB link between my laptop and the Terminator X it's gonna tell me I need to do the TPS auto set once again. I'll say, okay, that's fine. We can see right now we're live here down at the bottom and we're looking here, RPM is showing stall condition under sensors. We're seeing TPS. It says, it says needs cal or needs calibration. So the TPS auto set needs to be reformed when I'm uploading this file. Let's go ahead and do that right now. 
in order to perform a TPS auto set, essentially the calibration to establish where the min and max positions for the three TPS sensor is going to be, we're going to go up here into our drop down and we're going to go in here to TPS auto set. Please ensure that you have performed an ignition cycle prior to performing the TPS auto set, which I have, so I'll say OK. And then make sure your ignition is on and engine is not started. When you're ready to begin, click start, I'll say start. Slowly press the pedal to the floor and then slowly release the pedal and do this twice. I'm going to do exactly what it's saying. I'm going to go all the way to the floor, come all the way off, go all the way to the floor again, and then come all the way off, and click done. And then we can see the TPS auto set was successful. What that means is the voltage range is within reason and it's calibrated and established uh, the min and max points. Yeah, it has you do it twice just so it can ensure that the minimum and the maximums here are going to be registered properly. You're not going to have a fluke one time you go and do uh, the sweep and the throttle movement and the next time you're not having um, repeatable voltage ranges or repeatable voltage results. In this case, everything was repeatable, so it's calibrated to the min and max voltage thresholds based on our throttle opening that we have for this vehicle. It will be unique to your vehicle and you always have to do it when you're uploading a new file into your Terminator X, uh, especially after a firmware update like this. So let's click OK. And now Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.